Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another Five Good Minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson. We're continuing our study of the Gospel of Matthew today, and we're in chapter 4, and we're going to read um, through verse, chapter, through verse, starting with chapter 1, we're going to read through verse 16. And this is the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, tested by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and stood him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and upon their hands they shall bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, On the other hand it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and began to minister to him. Now when he heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew then into Galilee. We're going we're gonna to end there at verse, uh, at, verse, at verse 12 today. Okay, let's talk about the, the, the uh, temptation of Jesus. Jesus is taken by the Spirit himself into the desert and spends 40 days there before what is intended to happen does happen. Spends 40 days there fasting. And one would assume praying as well because it's often fasting and prayer are so connected um, to each other. Um, and Jesus is often at prayer, but he's there praying and fasting. So before he can begin, after his baptism, he receives the power of the Holy Spirit, there has to be this time of preparation, and that's what he does in the wilderness. Fasting for 40 days. We talked about numbers being one of the ways that, that the Holy Spirit structures the book and, and, and leaves his, his thumbprint on the book. 40 is important. It's an important number throughout the Bible. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Three, two other men besides Jesus fasted for 40 days. One was Moses when he was on Mount Sinai receiving the law. The other was Elijah when he ran to Mount Sinai and God spoke to him in a still small voice and said, why are you here? The other two men in scripture who fasted for 40 days and 40 nights are Moses and Elijah, the two men who will appear to him again on a high mountain. They'll be there with Jesus, probably um, uh, on, on the top of Mount Hermon in the snow um, and, and when Jesus is transfigured. Um, so 40 is an important number. After 40 days, when he is vulnerable, Satan comes to tempt him. Now, we know from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that God manages our temptation level. He just does. So this is necessary for Jesus to undergo. We know from Hebrews chapter 4 that Jesus was tempted in all ways as we are, yet without sin. And we know that he's only qualified from Hebrews chapter 5 to be our high priest because he learned obedience during his humanity on earth. Um, so this is all necessary. Um, and so... You know, Satan immediately goes for the throat, like any predatory beast, like a lion would do. He goes for the throat. He's hungry. And so he says, turn these stones to bread. You can do it. Just do it. Turn these stones to bread. And the, Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 8, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So he takes from the t pinnacle of the temple. Does the, does the, the devil have... Um, authority over time and space that he can just transport Jesus or is he allowed to do this because this is necessary 
uh, and God allows it to happen. I don't think the devil has any power over time and space. I don't. I, I don't. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and so I think this is, the, you know, it is that God is allowing this to happen. The pinnacle of the temple, it's okay, you throw a scripture at me, I'll throw a scripture at you. And he quotes Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. But Jesus has a scripture that is more clearly uh, and unequivocally expressed. You will not tempt the Lord your God. In saying this, Jesus says that I am the Lord your God. Do you get this? Jesus is saying in Satan's face, I am God. I'm God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Um, also, that passage from Psalm doesn't mean that. Because if it meant that absolutely, Jesus would not have been crucified, which is what he came to do. And so then he takes him to a very high mountain and he says, I'll give you all of this if you'll just worship me this one time. Now, in a sense, it is Satan's to give. He is the prince of the power of the air. He's the one who um, has polluted and through his pollution controlled human culture. In a large, to a large degree. I mean, the New Testament talks about it. Paul talks about it in Ephesians, talks about it in Corinthians. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's just who he is. And so, in a sense, for a short while, it sort of is his to offer. But Jesus uh, just gets rid of him. Leave. It is written, You shall love the Lord your God and serve him only. Deuteronomy chapter 6. In fact, he's really sort of um, uh, uh, um, connecting with the greatest command in that, in that very passage. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Um, Jesus falls back on the greatest command. And he says, leave, and the devil leaves. Resist the devil, Peter tells us, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Um, so, um, it, it's important that we have this example that Satan, to know how Satan acts and how we need to act, Satan will attack us when we are the most vulnerable. Satan will use what we believe to be true to try to get us to do something wrong. Um, but we stand firm. We look him square in the face and we say, leave. And if we do that, and we, and we meet him with the scripture, then he will do that. He will leave. So that's an important lesson that we learn from, um, from, this, from this period of temptation. Is this the only temptation Jesus faces? I don't think so. I don't think that at all. It's not the way humans exist. And Jesus is fully human as well as fully divine. He'll begin his uh, ministry next time. Uh, and we'll look uh, at verse 12 through 17 next time. And uh, thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. <clears throat>